Hi, my name is David Peters and this talk I'm going to talk about health inequities. Uh, we're going to introduce some concepts and terms as well as some, introduce some ways of measuring inequity. And, and by the way, this will help with your, uh, with your assignment. So uh, equality or inequality is really about being the same or inequality about differences. When we talk about inequity, you know, we're often adding another element to it because it usually adds an element, an element about fairness uh, related to those differences or inequalities. And inequalities is really about you know, un unfairness or injustice. Um, sometimes in, in health and in economics we talk about uh, horizontal equity, sometimes about vertical equity. So horizontal equity is about treating equals as equals. So those with the same condition should get the same type of health treatment, for example. And vertical equity is um, treating unequals unequally. For example, those who need to have greater health needs would get more care. Uh, or, you know, in economics you might say those that are wealthier might pay more taxes than others and there would be a distribution. So that's the, the vertical versus horizontal. These have some implications for the way you interpret measures of, of equity and health and otherwise. So um, health inequities is really when we're talking about inequalities or disparities between groups or between individuals related to health. And these could be health determinants like risk factors, nutrition, they could be about health services, or they could be about health outcomes such as you know, illness, death, mortality issues. Um, but note that often many programs in the past have focused on average or aggregate levels. For example, the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, focused on average levels of achieving health, uh, such as mortality reduction, for example. Uh, the new Sustainable Development uh, this uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, tries to address some of the in uh, issues of inequalities when they talk about universal health care, for example. But health inequity is really a central concept and a central issue in global health uh, because we're concerned about poor health conditions, both risks for uh, poverty or risk for illness, uh, and opportunities among vulnerable populations. Uh, as I mentioned, we're concerned about what is fair or what is uh, unjust. Uh, and sometimes inequalities in themselves lead to more harmful consequences, not just for the, those that are worse off, but for everyone. Um, a common assumption we have that doesn't always hold, but is commonly, that commonly does, is that health inequalities or inequities are not self-correcting. They don't correct themselves on their own. Health markets don't work to correct inequalities, for example. And therefore they require interventions, policies and programs that address uh, inequities. So, uh, you might think, well, what are the ways in which people can be disadvantaged, the ways in which they are vulnerable, or the ways in which inequities show up? Well, they are often related to the social determinants, and here you may have seen this figure before, is when you look at the determinants of health, many of the determinants are outside the health sector. And although we put health in the middle, we could easily put any of these other concepts in, but they are related to uh, socioeconomic poverty, of course many ways in which you can describe poverty as well, uh, but food, nutrition, education, environment, gender, social capital, all ways in which, that, all ways that uh, contribute to health and, and illness, uh, but all ways in which people can be different, in which there can be inequalities and create inequities in, in health. So, um, you know, if you look at the ways in which people are disadvantaged, sometimes it's due to economic uh, concerns, uh, income or wealth, differences with uh, social differences, differences in education or occupation, differences in social capital access to, uh, to social, uh, to uh, things that communities have, for example. Uh, or there might be differences that are cultural, uh, differences in caste, ethnicity, languages, religion, sexual orientation, sometimes there's just demographic differences between youth and elderly uh, or other kinds of disabilities, physical, mental, that might create disadvantage in, in different populations. Um, but you might say, well, okay, well, there's lots of ways in which people are different, but what are the dimensions of uh, disadvantage that, you know, how does that lead to uh, affecting people's health? What are the mechanisms by which this happens? 
Now, you can look at this from a mechanistic point of view that sometimes it's because those disadvantages are differential exposures, uh, maybe difference if changes to the, or differences in uh, physical environments such as housing or exposure to biologic or other environmental toxins, for example, or differences in behavior, diet or harmful practices. Uh, they might be differences in opportunities, uh, educational opportunities, access to healthcare, knowledge about uh, what you can uh, do or, or the kind of care that you can uh, uh, get and the kinds of community resources that you may have in order to, to affect your health. Now there are basically, well there are many ways of looking at it, but uh, there are at least four different models that explain how these inequities in health occur. Uh, one of them is a cultural, behavioral type of point of view that says basically that the differences in health, these health inequities are results from differences in behavioral or lifestyle choices that led to ill health, you know, whether you choose to smoke, for example, or the cultural norms and environmental factors that we just talked about that might lead to differences. Uh, there's also, you know, a psychosocial model that looks at really the, the different psychological stresses that are different, that, um, that affect people differently. Uh, particularly, you know, if you have less control on the type of work you do or job security, if you have less social support or if you live in areas that have higher crime, for example, or warfare. And that, that, it's that, that these types of stresses that actually cause uh, ill health and indirectly through these effects on, on behavioral uh, and lifestyle questions. And then there's a more, uh, which you might call a materialistic type of approach or model in which you look at differences due to exposure to material factors that are outside of your control, such as housing, for example, or workplace hazards, and that's what causes some of the, the differences. And then, you know, the fourth model might be considered a life course model that really says that the inequalities at any particular age are the results in differences from an accumulation of these cultural, behavioral, uh, psychosocial, and, and materialistic type of uh, factors that build up over the life period or occur at certain type stages of life. Anyway, these are, are sort of theoretical constructs that help help to describe the pathways. Uh, but you know, whatever, however they work, uh, it is useful to in fact measure these things. One of the things we have found in health is that if you have policies that are addressing inequalities or addressing the poor uh, and vulnerable populations, you actually need to be explicit about not just the policy, but measuring uh, how things change. And so I'm going to introduce some ways of looking at this, some ways of measuring it, and recognize that there are many approaches, and, and not all of them quantitative, that are helpful in describing and understanding uh, health inequality. Um, you know, and, and the other thing I would raise about this is that every time in which you make a measurement of something, uh, it's not only something that is measurable and, and other dimensions may not be measurable, that may or may not be more important, but they also reflect this type of conceptual or philosophical concern about how you look at inequality. Uh, and so because of that, it is often useful in a given circumstance to look at more than one type of measurement of, of inequality. Now, what what most of uh, these measurements have of, of inequality are basically three components. One is a health-related measure. Now this might be a, a risk factor for health, it might be a health need, uh, access to care, uh, it might be the differences or the quality of care or your health status itself, whether you're alive and dead, for example, or disabled or, or, or ill. Um, a second component is some way of identifying groups or individuals that are that different. And again, this might be along socio-economic uh, types of parameters or any of those dimensions that we talked about previously. And then you have to have a method for how do you make the comparisons. So those are the three components. A health measure, a measure of identifying groups, uh, and a measure of making the comparisons. So what we're going to do is talk about those methods in, in, that you're going to use to measure economic disparity in health, which is part of your assignment. It actually is question four, and where you're going to put the results in table four as well. Uh, so we start off with a measure of uh, economic, uh, the economic measure. So uh, economic status can be measured by a number of things. It could be by income, it could be by consumption, or it could be by wealth, uh, which is basically the assets that people have. Now, the, what's commonly used in demographic and health surveys, uh, in particular in low and middle income countries where you don't have good measures of 
income and consumption is very hard to measure, very tedious. So you use assets or wealth uh, to see what happens and what, what people own actually. And what we do is we're going to conceptually, we're going to put the population divided into equal groups, in this case quintiles or fifths, and we're going to put them in a row from poorest to least poor or wealthy, depending on your perspective. And then we're going to uh, assess by uh, health outcome or health services across the income groups. So we're going to look at two mortality rates and the set of health services, that's the health component. And then we're going to have two types of, of comparisons. One is this low high poor rich ratio and then the concentration index. So the concentration index is very different. The, the low high ratio is pretty intuitive. You take the poorest quintile and you compare it to the richest quintile and that's basically like a rate ratio comparison which you'll talk about in epidemiology. The concentration index is a little different. It's more like the Lorentz curve or Gini coefficient. Uh, and what you have here is, is uh, a graph showing you how a concentration index is created. So what you have here, in this case, is taken from real data from Brazil. And what we've done is we've put the, um, uh, the sample of the population is listed here from 0 to 100 percent, in this case by income, but we're going to do it by wealth in your examples. And then you have the proportion of children that are underweight. So instead of mortality, we're going to use underweight. Uh, and basically what you have is a, uh, this is the equality line, this 45 degree line from 0 to 100. And basically uh, the equality line says that uh, for every 25% of the population, they account for 25% of the cumulative underweight children. So if it's perfectly equal, it goes along that line. So what happens here is that uh, we have the equality line and then we have the actual line here taken at two points in time. 1987 and 1994. And the way we measure the concentration index is actually this space between the actual curve and the equality line, the 45 degree line, uh, and this, which this curve here is called the concentration curve, and it's two times the area in here is the, um, uh, is the, what, what the concentration index is. It has a value between minus one and positive one, with zero being on the line here being perfectly equal. Uh, and if it's less than one, you see that the variable is more, is more, what we say, more concentrated among the poor, more common among the poor. So what you see here is that in 1987, 25% uh, of the children had about 30% of the accumulative, the, the poorest 25% had more than 30% of the underweight. So it's concentrated, so that would be a negative number. And as you can see, uh, between 1987 and 94, the concentration actually, the curve actually moved outward, so it actually became more inequitable over time. The concentration index becomes a larger, uh, or becomes more negative over that time. So that's how it's calculated and what it looks like. Here's some work that, uh, that, that uh, my team did in India looking at uh, nationally at, at data, at uh, different types of services. Again, the red line here is the uh, equality line. But we see here, in this case, these are services. So services are a good thing as opposed to underweight or mortality. And so what we found here is that immunizations and outpatients through primary health care tended to be uh, concentrated among the poor, that the poor actually received more of these services, but that these ones here, the other side of the line, inpatient hospital care and outpatient hospital care uh, tended to be used, the concentration index was the other way, they're positive, that means the rich were getting more of these services. And again, there's cumulative population and cumulated benefit or services in this point. So, what you're going to do in your uh, case is you're going to take data from the files that we provide on demographic health survey data on mortality and, uh, well, child mortality and uh, under five mortality and infant mortality and then a set of health services uh, for, that are pretty common and basically used for uh, basic health service for, for maternal child care. You're going to use a file where we, uh, that's, that's labeled the Simplified Concentration Index Calculator uh, and this is basically a tool you can use to calculate the concentration index uh, and you get quartile data or quintile data, every uh, quintile as we've shown in these graphs, 
uh, about one more about a mortality and basic health services so that it actually will calculate the low high ratio which you could do easily with a calculator um, or pen and pencil and then the concentration index which takes a little bit more work and therefore it's easier with the uh, with the spreadsheet to be able to do that and then you're going to record your answers on table four and then you're going to have some interpretations around that which you're going to answer in, in question four so if you look at it your data is going to look like this you're going to take the uh, uh, the, I've actually put all the countries that are, are cases in one place. You're going to have, say, the infant mortality rate, uh, and then you're going to have the country listed here, and then you have the low, second, third, fourth, fifth uh, uh, quintiles and a population average. You're going to put these numbers into the um, into the spreadsheet and calculate the uh, uh, calculate the. It will calculate actually the concentration index for you. Similarly, you're going to look at some health services in antenatal, in antenatal care and do the same thing. Uh, this is what, uh, if you actually look at the, um, the file that calculates the concentration index, uh, it takes group data and you can enter data here in these, um, um, the blue area where it says enter data from low to high, quintile 1 to, to quintile 5. Um, you can only edit these blue spaces. Uh, in the file, uh, and you put your country mortality and health services data. You actually just put them in right here, the quintile means. You, we don't, uh, we didn't offer you the uh, the data to put in the actual numbers here. We're just, you, so just leave this alone for now. Uh, you need that data if you want to calculate the standard errors, the variance on these things, if you want to do, do statistical testing on it. Right now we're just looking at the, uh, this mean, the, uh, the main concentration index and the high-low ratio. When you put in the numbers, it will calculate for you the, um, uh, the low-high ratio, the concentration index. And if you had these other numbers, the, these would be meaningful, the standard errors and the t-test to see whether it's uh, statistically significant. Uh, chances are that leaving a 1,000 will is pretty close for most countries, and uh, it will give you a good idea if it's close to significant or not if you just leave it alone. And the, the spreadsheet will also give you a... Um, um, a, a graph to actually show you that concentration curve as well. So hopefully when you leave here, uh, you'll actually have a tool that you can use and, and you can tell uh, your, your prospective employer that, uh, yeah, I can calculate concentration indices and, and measure, way, uh, look, measure health inequities. Uh, you're going to then put your data into the, uh, your results into your table, answer your questions, uh, and, uh, and then, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle, you'll have done well on the, uh, that part of the assignment. So hopefully with this, uh, you'll have given, gotten an idea of the types of, of uh, ways of looking at health inequities, given you a tool that you can use to measure two ways of measuring economic disparities in health. And uh, with that, you'll be able to do more in-depth analysis further on and, and think more about the, the, this vexing problem of health in inequities, which is really a unifying principle of what we try to do, uh, what we try to address uh, in public health. Thanks very much.